Welcome into week five of the Low Post Pod. I'm your host, Christian Martinelli. Again, joined by Kyle Finn and Matt. Uh, good to have you boys on again. Another great week of games. Uh, as always, we had a lot of uh, great games this week. A few surprising outcomes, um, you know, proved us wrong. Um, but overall, it was, it was a fun week. A lot of great highlights. And I'm, I'm ready to get into it. Excited to get into it. Um, so the first game of the week was Lob City versus Halfway Crooks. You know, me and myself, I talked about how Halfway Crooks could get up, run off the court by 40, 50 points possibly. I think we all saw maybe Halfway Crooks taking a 25, 30 point L here. Um, and after maybe being down by like 18 at half, they held their own, they made it close and they only lose to Lob City 68 to 60. You boys were both on this court. Uh, what was the turning point in this game that allowed Halfway Crooks to make this game so tough? Uh, honestly, I was impressed by Halfway Crooks and just their like tenacity and their ability to stay in the game like mentally. But, I mean, I'm sure Kyle can attest to this. At some point, it looked like Lob City wasn't even trying. And I don't, I don't want to say that in a disrespectful way. It's more like a what, – like, what, what are you guys doing? Like, let's go here. Like, they were just doing – ISO offense, one-on-ones, and not really moving the ball. And then halfway Crooks would come down and score because Lob City didn't want to get back on defense. And then it, at the end, it just became a thing like, all right, let's calm down and just do enough to win the game. And that's what happened. But well, I was obviously on with Joey last night for the post-game show, and he said, you don't want to face the halfway Crooks in a playoff game because they're never going to give up. And I think we definitely saw that on Tuesday. Yeah, we saw Lob City uh, put on somewhat of a beating in the first quarter, you know, pulling to double digits. And then we saw them kind of, you know, take their foot off the gas. And uh, I think it was kind of more like they knew that they were going to win anyway. I think it was just more them trying to conserve energy, be really smart, make sure no one gets injured because the playoffs are actually right around the corner. We got week six and we got week seven and then it's the playoffs. So the players are just trying to stay as healthy as they can. No one doesn't want to get injured. They want to be at their best so that way they're ready to go make a deep run in the playoffs and I think that's what they were trying to do yeah I think that's pretty much what Lob City was doing sometimes they can be a little nonchalant because they know how nasty they are um and I assume that's what happened I know it was like a tie game with like four or five minutes left um so they had to get a little nervous there and obviously they they flipped the switch like they're able to do um and one of the best teams in the league still uh and I think maybe that was just a little bit of a trap game for them but they came out on top so at the end of the day, that's all that matters. They just made us all look a little bit dumb when we predicted this massive W. Um, but shout out to Halfway Crooks. Maybe they really do have some life left in this uh, season. So, um, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. I don't know. Joey's talking like they might have some life, but maybe they do. Maybe they don't. I don't know. I hated on them last Echo week. against the commish. Do. Yeah. I mean, I like going against the commish, but, you yeah, <laughs> that's just me. Um. All right, now into a game actually none of us saw, but um, we all got we all gathered our own information about this game. Um, so it was the Warriors versus the Stampede. Uh, I know we had the Warriors favored to win this game uh, by I think it was a solid like seven eight points something like that. Uh, and the Warriors, although it was a close game at half, Stampede actually had a one point lead. They come out on top, sixty one to thirty nine. Stampede falls apart in the second half. Warriors. Um, shows that they're just a tough team to beat, and they uh, win this one, yeah, 61-39. to 39. So so what do you guys think? Like, what is it um, about the Warriors, or what is it about one either of these teams that it is just like – I don't know what the right question is because these teams are kind of hard to figure out, especially the Stampede, because you see in the first half they have a, have a really, really good first half. Um, in the second half they just – you know, six points in the third quarter, seven in the fourth. What is it about them where they just can't keep uh, their consistency up from one half to the next? Well, I, I just say, think that they – Go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think they use all of their energy in the first half. So when it carries over to second half, they all their energy is drained down and they make it diff- they make it difficult for themselves to get back on defense and stay together on offense to keep this game interesting. While the Warriors, I, I think – they seem to be in a lot more better shape. They have better chemistry and they know how to tempo the game, which allows them to take advantage of other teams. Just to add on to that, Kyle saying, you know, Stampede, they get tired. I mean, they only had five guys mm-hmm. on Tuesday. 
And so that obviously adds to that point. But I was going to say you can kind of compare this to the Lob City halfway crooks game where Lob City, you know, they're a little slower in the fourth quarter and they're trying to get it going. But you know that they have guys that will get them buckets when they need them. Jose Mercado, I think Greg Holt had 22. I think he led the way for Lob City this week. But the Stampede, I don't know if they have that guy. They might start out hot in the first half and making a couple shots and things look good, but then nitty-gritty comes down to it. Are they going to have the guy in the fourth quarter that can can keep the offense going? We see on um, lesser talented teams in this league, like maybe Ball Don't Lie, they at least have players in um, – I'm forgetting – oh, Ro- Rosenberg, I think his name is, who drops consistently. Grant, Grant Rosenberg. Grant. Yeah, he drops consistently 20 to 30 a week. So if there's a close game, you'll you'll feel a little bit better with him on your team. But I don't know if the Stampede have that guy, especially when I saw when I've seen them in a, a couple of weeks that they, they look like they get kind of nervous, like down the stretch. And I just think the Warriors are have a more talented roster. I mean, Kevin, uh, I'm going to butcher his name. Figueroa. Yeah, Figueroa. Figueroa. He had he had 32. So I don't know yeah. if the Stampede have a guy that can get you in that 20 plus range consistently. Yeah. It's, it's glaring. Uh, Dan Heston, he's been probably their leading scorer the last few weeks. He he goes two for 14 from three. They go five for 31 from three as a team. Uh, live and die by the three. And a lot of times you're going to die by it in this league. Just not used to shooting on eight and a half feet. Um, so that was a tough shooting night for them. Obviously, the three ball fell apart at the end. And uh, Kevin Figueroa inside, like you just mentioned, he's, he's just so dominant. 32 points, 15 rebounds, eight on the offensive end. Um, that's just eight extra possessions. And, you know, he just cleaned up down there. He's a good chance to be player of the week this week. Uh, just unbelievable game from him. And the Warriors going to be tough to beat when uh, Figueroa's playing like that, especially when uh, the supporting cast is helping out as well. Um, so on to another game, a game that I think we laid out as a pick em, if I remember correctly, uh, Ball Don't Lie versus Mambas. Both of these teams 0-4 coming into the game. Um I think we went, there was four of us. I think we said two would uh, had the Mambas, two had Ball Don't Lie. Um, but Ball Don't Lie ended up winning this game 78 to 69. It was a really close game at halftime. It was really uh, back and forth all game. Uh, but Ball Don't Lie uh, win the third quarter 16 to nine. And then they just hold them off in the fourth quarter. Um, it was a you know great performance from Ball Don't Lie. Best all around performance I've seen from them all year. Um, and Mambas, tough. Only showed up with four guys. They they got gassed towards the end. I personally thought if they had their full squad of like seven people that usually show up, I, I think that they could have won. Because I mean, to be able to drop sixty nine points with only four guys showing up playing the full forty minutes, I think is still pretty impressive. And nice. yeah, and uh, you know they la- they lacked a little bit on defense allowing ball online to score i believe a season high 78 points in a game i think that's their season high yeah. um but i got to give credit where credit's due grant rosenberg uh he did his job like we expected though but Alice enhorn uh 80% and when you shoot 80% in a game you're going to win uh sp- especially with Jake Abrams too uh grant had had a great supporting cast and that's the reason why he won they won yeah, how about that? 48 points on 30 shots, if I'm looking at these stats correct, correctly. That's yeah. pretty impressive. But, um, yeah, i never really been too impressed with the Mambas. Um, I mean, they, they had two guys get 26. I mean, when what, when you're playing 40 minutes, I mean, that's bound to happen. That stuff, someone's got to be scoring. But, um, yeah, I don't got too much to say on this game. I'm not too impressed with either of these teams. Kind of just like a battle of the teams in the lower um, half. Maybe I'm trying to think like playoffs. Maybe if Ball Don't Lie get like a good draw, maybe play like an Orcas or like a Warriors, I, I can maybe see them maybe making a little noise. But as of right now, it's you know I don't really have too much to comment on on the on these teams. But hopefully they can maybe m- hopefully make a turnaround and, and get some more wins. Yeah, I think I'm pretty much done riding the Mamba's train. I tried to will them to a W, it just didn't <laughs> work out. Um, Ball they just lie, had their oops. two best chances with yeah. Ball Lie and the Stampede. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much. Yeah, I tried, didn't happen. Sorry. Uh, see you next year. But Ball Don't Lie, they did impress me a little bit uh, this week. Just you know, they they got some extra help from uh, 
from Ellis and Ellis, Ellis watched the pod last week. He commented. So we appreciate that, bro. Um, you know, he put up 22, like you said, on, on a great shooting. Jake Abrams, the uh, Hebrew hammer, he put up uh, 16 on seven of eight of shooting. I promised him I would give him that shout out, but he deserved it. He, he played great. So, and, and ball don't lie. They really had some great highlight plays this week. Uh, we'll probably see a few of them in the top five plays when they come out. Um, overall, I think ball don't lie showed a little something this week. Obviously, like I'm not sold on anything whatsoever with them, but they just showed a little bit of life. Um, they showed an ability to score, albeit against the worst team in the league. We'll see what happens, but Jake Abrams and Ellis can uh, continue to help out Grant with some of the scoring and, you know, maybe they play a little better defense going forward. We'll see if uh, ball don't lie can, can make a little dent here towards the end of the season. Um, so enough on that game, you know, we, we put enough time into those two defeated teams. Uh, but on to two of the best teams in the league. This was a great game. I think we're all looking forward to. We all watched this entire game. Uh, Duye's boys versus Good U. Um, this was an awesome game. This is what Legacy Leagues is all about. We had dunks. We had uh, drama, ejections, everything. It, comebacks. It, it was an awesome game. And uh, at the end... Cream rose to the top. Duye's boys comes out on top, 90 to 78, uh, with a super strong fourth quarter, scoring 30 points there. Um, so, what do you guys think about this game? I mean, it's probably one of the best games you guys have seen in Legacy League so far, I assume. Yeah, this was super, super entertaining uh, the whole way. Um, obviously, teams were exchanging leads. You know, the Duye boys were up pretty decently at halftime, and then. Uh, I think seven or eight points. And then good. You had the big third quarter. So by the time the fourth quarter came around, it was really, really close. And then obviously do boys 30 in the fourth, but which is extremely impressive. You know, they com combined for over, they got 85 between three scores. And at the end of the game, they only had one sub with, you know, Shane Patrick got the very uh, loud and passionate ejection there in the third quarter, which was just a crazy thing uh, to witness, but I'm going to make a hot take here. I just I want to hear your take your opinions on this. Matt St. Hours on Good U is 31 points. If you just watch him play, is he the best player in the league? It's top 10, top five easily. Yeah. To, okay, top ten, top ten. Yeah, when he's only using his left hand, he's top ten. I mean, he's <laughs> yeah. he, he's a top five lock. So I, mean, I, I don't know if there's a guy that I would take, even though they lost and even though. He doesn't always score the most points every week because he's got a talented team. He spreads the rock around. I don't know if there's a guy you take over him. That my personal opinion, watching him play, I was amazed. Yeah, he's just super well rounded. He's he's extremely good offense, defense. Uh, he does it all. Uh, stat line really doesn't even do him justice because he was just chucking up some shots at the end. Honestly, yeah, um, he he played extremely well the other night, and he's definitely one of the best in the league. He does know how to break down the. Uh the defense pretty well even when it's just him against like three other people uh, his play style is um something pretty special and it doesn't really i don't think we talk about it enough yeah um and, and on to the duyas boys again we see insane production kyle they dedicated that win to you i mean i know uh big richard you know you were in your feels a little bit after they dedicated that game to you but listen you said they only had two players and Sure. I mean, Vincent and, and John, they're nasty. They combined for 66 points, 50 over 50% shooting. Then we see Zach Tartaglia thrown in 22 next week. You know, we'll see uh, Brian Yarsi back there. Uh, so, so what's your response to that? You know, they, they had a little, a few words for you after that game. Uh, I got to say Zach Tartaglia, he really stepped up to the plate. Uh, I didn't really think he was going to have a 22 point performance, but uh, especially in the second half, he really did light it up. He was uh, he was making a lot of smart basketball plays, um, taking advantage of um, being down in the post, shooting some fadeaways, making some three pointers, and uh, he did have a little bit of an ankle injury. But he he got right back up. He put some ice on it and went right back out there, and he looked like a brand new man still, still dropping points like nothing even happened. I got to give it to him. Put some respect on Zach Tartaglia's name, Smithfield. Born and raised, put some respect on it. That's all I have to say. Yeah, he, he's he's a beast. He's been a little quiet this season because of how much 
Vincent and, and John have been doing. But this this game, he stepped up to the plate, hit some key threes, and really, in my opinion, he was the main reason they got back in this game. We're able to uh, come over the hump because you know Vincent and John are going to do their things. But when Zach's pouring in too, Duya's boys is even that much more dangerous, in my opinion. He's like that X factor type of player, like just like you said. You know that Vincent and Q2 hopefully are going to combine for about like 50, 45. If Tartaglia can get you 20 and play great defense and make good plays, then that gets you wins. That's one of the reasons why they're 5-0. Yeah. And, yeah, my favorite my uh, favorite part of the game, Shane Patrick getting tossed, literally showing up from Cabo, off, off the plane from Cabo, off jumps the onto the court, yeah, gets a massive swat, says get that the f out of here uh deserve that tech 100 percent deserve that tech he said it himself uh he definitely earned it um and then later in the game receives a really soft tech in my opinion didn't really do much there um and then just a huge reaction out of him what makes shane so hilarious uh just a massive reaction putting on a show uh screaming and yelling at the ref the ref looked extremely scared of him uh and, and, you know, until he t- finally gets kicked out of the gym. Uh, for for some reason, I wasn't sure if that was going to help Dewey's boys wake up because they were struggling at this point in the game or what it was going to do. But it seemed to actually uh, give Dewey's boys a little kick in the butt. And uh, they exploded from that point on. And, you know, they ended up winning this game pretty handily in the end. Well, when he got ejected at first, they were going on a little bit of a slide. I mean, they ended up – they had – Good, you went on like uh, like an eight zero run to close out the third, and uh, uh, something happened, and they just really, really took advantage of good you somehow just winning it by twelve. Uh, Do get boys or something else? I mean, look, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to have a uh, oh yeah, Kyle. How you feel about this one? <laughs> but um, I was gonna say I'm not trying to have Shane Patrick come at me or anything, but like. It's not like the Duye boys were really missing much when he was gone. I mean, 0 for 4, was fouling all over the place, getting texts. So good you was getting free throws in crucial moments. I mean, I don't know. I, it might have done them a couple favors. I know Shane, I don't, uh, Shane's one of my favorites to watch, but fresh off the plane, I don't think was doing the Duye boys any justice in that first half. We'll say he definitely probably had some jet lag in the legs. Wasn't his best yeah, physical yeah. performance, but the, we'll give it to him uh, for this week. Yeah, the energy, the energy he brings usually uh, gets in other teams' heads, and a hundred percent for other games for sure. It wasn't clicking on Tuesday though. No, so I mean, whatever worked out for the Duyas boys. Still, they're on a whatever eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve game winning streak. Whatever it is, uh, they can't be stopped at this point. Um, and on to another team that you boys don't really think can be stopped, but they were stopped this week. It was the Werewolves versus the Ozone Boys. Uh, a great game, went to overtime, but the Werewolves end up coming up on top, 72-65. to 65. I got to give a shout-out to uh, Tyler Cruz, who was on with us last week. He, he mentioned specifically, if this game comes down to the wire, it goes to overtime, I think that gives Werewolves the edge. And we saw in the end it did. Uh, werewolves win the overtime period 11 to 4 um boys this was an absolutely great game lots of highlights uh what do we think about this game i got one thing to say first kyle and then i'll hand it over to you and then i'll come back that boy brian heston he's a bad man (laughs) he's a beast brian heston is a bad man i mean he took a chokehold on that game in the second half absolutely and the way he was so calm about it like, he wasn't frantic. He, he was born for that type. He was born for that Legacy League's moment. But the way – in just right out the gate in overtime, they scored, like, six points. And I don't think Ozone boys realized, how, like, oh, my God, there's a minute left and we're down to six. Like, two-minute overtime is so, so quick. It's like five or six possessions. And, yeah, he's a bad man. But, Kyle, you can go into whatever detail you'd like. Yeah, he's pretty slithery. I mean, when you get three blocks and two steals in the game, I, that's that's worth something mentioning. Uh, leading his team in rebounds by a very wide margin. I mean, he was he was doing it all. He's a, he's a big, lanky kid. He he kind of reminds me of Giannis. Just get he he can run down the floor, back and forth, super fast, and just controls the game and can just take on basically anybody, two, three guys in his way. Doesn't matter to him. He'll do like a euro or whatever he needs to, to get to the hoop. 
and he'll finish or go to the free throw line. That's the biggest thing he does need to work on, though, is his free throws because he definitely could have ended up with more points had he hit his free throws, especially at the end of the game. He easily could have had 30 points. Yeah. yeah, and the Ozone boys are still a really good team. I just thought, like, you know, they were maybe a little flustered by how intense, you know, the werewolves came out, how good they were playing. Shout out Zach Brooks for some late game heroics um, with that big charge right at the end, to then give them one more shot to win it before the overtime. But, you know, that was Paul McGuire. He didn't, you know, two seconds left. He didn't have that great of a look. But um, I still think they're a good team. I think, they'll, yeah, Kyle, go ahead. I was also going to mention, I like the um, – at the end of the uh, the game when there was about like 30 seconds left to get the ball back to make it a one-possession game. That little quick substitution that they did to bring in um, – I think his name is in – 31 on, on Arizona. Yeah, 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 that's him. Yeah, I like that they did that little thing where they took – they brought him in to try to fluster and get a steal, and they did. he did exactly that, and then they subbed him right back out, and they got Patrick Hogan back in uh, to bring a big man in to get some rebounds in case there was a shot miss. But um, I like that they're very consciously aware that, like, oh, he, he's he's fast. He, he can get in there, slithering in there, get the steal, and do his job. That's the one thing I like about the Ozone boys. They know their role. Yeah, they, they, they micromanage the team really well. Like, uh, I, and like, they like to like have fun and goof around a bit, but then when it got serious, they were definitely in it. Just, it was just simply the werewolves were just too good this week. And I definitely owe the werewolves some, uh, some comeuppance because I was not, first of all, new to the league. And I think they started like, oh, and two or one and two or something. And I wasn't too heavy on them, but then I realized that they had a rough start to that schedule. They were playing some really good teams at the beginning, and now they're playing some teams that are in their ballpark or even a little bit better, and they're picking up good wins. So I would not want to play the Werewolves in the playoffs. They look like a pretty good team. And shout out Brian Heston because he's, he's a bad man, as Stephen A. Smith would say. Yeah, Brian Heston and Dave Campbell combination. It's a nasty one when they're, they're clicking. A uh, huge win by them. I just felt myself that, the werewolves would pull this one out. I just felt like they were better than a two and three team. Um, I just felt them and Ozone boys were equal. So I just felt like they should both be three and two. And it worked out that way. Um, Ozone, again, nothing to really hang their head about. Uh, they're playing great ball this year. Uh, they lost to a team that, you know, they if they play 10 times, they'll probably each win five. That's kind of how that matchup is. Um, but yeah, shout out to werewolves. They're hot. Ozone boys still got to watch out for them because – they're extremely dangerous uh, anytime you play them. Yeah. And now on to the uh, – oh, Kyle, you going to say something else? I was going to say Ozone and Werewolves, they always find a way to make the game close. Yeah, they do. Scrappy teams. You got to love them. Every time you watch them, it's it's good entertainment. Uh, and now on to the, the last game of the week, Orcas versus Sin City. Uh, but this game just didn't happen. It, it never happened. Uh, <laughs> Sin City just didn't get enough guys to show up to the game. I felt bad for the Orcas. They had a few dudes there that were ready to play. Uh, and I guess they didn't get the memo that the game was uh, forfeited by Sin City. 2-0 W for the Orcas. Uh, two points in the in the column for uh, Dexter Liu. I guess, I don't know if I would even want those points. It destroys your points per game. Um, I'd be like, just give that to someone else. Uh, but either way, uh, we're not going to really talk about this game. There's nothing to talk about. Well, isn't it better than having a zero? I I mean, I just don't know if you would get – I don't know. Yeah, I guess you're right. I was just thinking that maybe it wouldn't even count as a game. But, yeah, I guess oh, you're sure. right. Uh, so, yeah, Orcas, whatever, they got the win. Uh, maybe they were going to win. Maybe they weren't. But Sin City let them off the hook. So, uh, anyway, we'll just move on. We'll get on to, the, to our players of the week, then we'll get into uh, week, week six matchups. Um, so, Matt, we'll start with you because your face is on my screen. Uh, yep. Who's your player of the week this week? Oh, man, there's a couple uh, that I'm thinking about, especially from the DA boys and other teams. But I think this one's got to go to Heston, uh, Brian Heston. Um, shout out to DA boys, Tartaglia, Volpe, and uh, Q2 with, you know, getting 20-plus each um, and two of them getting 30-plus. But, I mean, Werewolves and Ozone boys, that was maybe not the best game of the night, but I think the most competitive, the most, like, coin toss type of game where you didn't know who was going to win, and Heston was just there in the critical moments um, at some points. Uh, shout out Campbell, too, with 21, but at some points, Heston was just carving it up. So, 
Yeah, so that was a big win for them because they knocked the Ozone boys back to the same record as them. They're both three and two. So if that went a different way, it would have been a, a way different, you know, two and three and four and one. So shout out him. He's my player of the week. How about you? I'm going to take a different approach. Uh, I'm going to do <laughs> – I'm going to go Grant Rosenberg again, uh, ball online, their first one of the week, you know, being able to rally the team together, making sure uh, everybody gets the ball, the running plays. He led the, he led the team in rebounds. Uh, he, he had a great supporting cast with them. Um, definitely a big, a big chemistry boost today. He, he brought a lot of that to that game and um, he simply took over and won the game. Yeah. I like that pick. Yeah, I like giving Baldwin a lot a little love. We were we were a little hard on them the last few weeks. Uh, they they definitely deserve the love, though. I'm I'm happy to uh, see them getting that love. I'm, I, I'm not that no Duguay boys. I'm not I'm not giving anyone play of the game. I don't like that they called me out on Twitter. They, not giving <laughs> they, anyone play of the game. Right, they roasted your ass. I'll say that. <laughs> um, right. But, but uh, I'm not going to go with any Dunia's boys for player of the week because I've been doing – I can literally do Vincent Volpe, John Kutu, you know, every single week it seems like. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Kevin Figueredo, 32 points, uh, 15 rebounds, eight offensive rebounds. Just unbelievable performance. He took over in the second half. Uh, if you watch the, the highlights on Snapchat, it was literally pass to Kevin Figueredo, drop step, uh, two-handed dunk, literally on repeat over and over. Um, he's just too much of a force down low and another amazing week by him. He's easily going to be an all-star this year. Um, uh, and he's just been a dominant force inside. So yeah, he's my pick for sure. Um, and obviously, like I said, Vincent Volpe, 30, John Kutu, 33, two amazing performances, but as, as Kyle rolls his eyes, uh, I'm not going to give it to them this week because they've been getting uh, plenty of love every other week. So as we move into the week six matchups, uh, right off the rip, I see literally two amazing matchups that could be game of the week matchups. Um, and they're both at seven, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to figure out, uh, you know, how I can watch both of these somehow. But the first game, Lob City versus the Werewolves. Um, werewolves, like we said, three game tier here. Obviously, we expect Lob City to be favored, but you never know with the Werewolves, especially when Brian Heston is is playing as tough um, as he has been the last few weeks after, you know, his one bad game. Um, I see this as, you know, Lob City probably favored from somewhere from seven to 10 points, but I do think this is going to be a tough matchup either way. What do you guys think? Yeah, Kyle, go first. For me, I'm going to say the Werewolves take this. I think Lob City got way too comfortable last game, and oh. I just feel like that's going to carry over again. Uh I think they're just going to let their foot off the gas because I think they really want to be ready for the playoffs and they're not going to really try to go too crazy um, in the coming week. So I think the werewolves are going to come out, make a big statement. Uh, They're going to move up in the win column. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say it it will be a close game regardless because both these teams obviously do not like losing, but I just think, Lobsy is going to take their foot off the gas. I'll say werewolves are going to take advantage of it. I'll say werewolves win by five. Wow. Uh, obviously, I would love a werewolves win, but I'm going to have to still go Lob City. Um, they looked really impressive this whole season, even if Tuesday was, you know, a little bit of a rough outing. But I think what favors them against the werewolves and what the werewolves capitalize on against the Ozone Boys was, was height. Uh, the werewolves, I think, had better height against the Ozone Boys, and then, but Lob City has better height than the werewolves, and that's how the werewolves are so quick to get into the basket and you know get dunks and stuff against Ozone Boys. So I think the Lob-, Lob City will lock that down a little bit more. The offense won't be able to get through as easily, and Lob City's got some got some killers on that team. So we can't let one week distract us from the fact that you know they're a really great team. So I still got Lob City, but. I'll take a five point spread, five five or six point spread on that too. I think five points is, is fair seeing what we're all saying. And one point I want to mention is this is kind of a revenge game uh, in the werewolf sense because Jose Mercado, who we all know is, you know, top MVP candidate right now, he was supposed to be on the werewolves last year. The season fell through. 
Jose decided to move on, take his uh, talents to Lob City. So I don't know if there's any bad blood there. I don't know what the deal is between uh-huh. these teams. But all I know is that Jose Mercado, you know, was supposed to be on the Werewolves. Now he's on Lob City. So I think that adds a little intrigue to this uh, game. I do think Lob City will cover the five-point spread. I think they're going to win this. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a tough game, but I do think they're just a little bit better, a little too tough and too deep uh, for the Werewolves who, who struggle after, you know, da- uh, Dave Campbell and Brian Heston. It all depends on how Brian Heston is going to do for the Werewolves. If Brian Heston does fantastic, the whole team succeeds. They all rest on his shoulders. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's uh, the conclusion we've came down to now at this point. Uh, they live and die by Brian Heston. Usually he plays outstanding, so it's it's a good sign for the Werewolves. Um, this week we'll see. It's going to be a tough matchup. going to be a fun matchup. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but no matchup I'm really looking forward to more than maybe two of the most electrifying teams in the league, Duye's boys versus the Ozone boys. It's the Battle of the Boys. Uh, one of it, which is the reigning champion, one of which is coming off a, a tough loss. Um, obviously, Duye's boys have to be favored here. Um, although I think this can be a very close game, especially with Shane Patrick suspended this week. Um, Kyle, what do you think uh, a, a fair line would be for this game? Uh, I don't want to pick the Duye's boys, but because uh, I've been riding those on the whole year, though, but. Duguay boys, you guys just keep proving me wrong, proving me wrong. But the thing, though, is every time that they've won, the lead that they've won by has continually gotten smaller and smaller, oh, though. That's get the one out thing. Of here. Oh, it's true, though. It's 20... true. But look, it's different opponents. <laughs> this is one of the top tier teams, Ozone Boys are, but I'll give Duguay boys the win. I'll say. They're gonna. It's gonna go down to the single digits now. I'm gonna say they win by five. Five. I um. I love Ozone Boys, but they might be a little rattled after that Werewolves game. I got Duye Boys on this one. Um, I'd say I'd honestly give them like twelve. I I think that good U win is gonna ignite some fire. I mean, oh, they they are without Pat Shane Patrick. That's right. Um, ah, you know what. I'll still go. I'll still ride with them this week. These are my two favorite teams mm-hmm. going off against each other. So it, it's like I'm trying to pick my favorite kid, but I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna go uh, Duye boys, but I will still love the Ozone boys. The, the, they'll bounce back. They'll make some noise in the playoffs. Yeah, and, and I think I think we can just let, like let let this line land at about ten points. I think that's fair. Um, and you know I can't say for sure Shane Patrick is going to be out. He's technically supposed to be, but I know Greg Holt. Um, got ejected a few weeks ago, and he didn't get suspended. So we'll see what happens. Um, I don't know. I'd like to see Shane Patrick in this game because Ozone boys like to talk. I think it would be a lot of fun, uh, very entertaining. So I think Dewey is boys. I mean, they just beat Good U by 12. I think Good U is, um, you know, a little bit better than the Ozone boys. Not that this always equates. Um, but I do, th- do think Dewey is boys end up handling business here. Um you know, they're just, they're just too hungry, man. They, they, they always dig deep when it matters and they get the W. It seems like um, Ozone Boys, it's a tough back-to-back weeks, f- to be honest. Uh, it doesn't get much harder than that. But, uh, you know, that's what happens. I think it'll make them better down the stretch, beginning to play these uh, top-tier teams in, in the middle of the season. So, uh, yeah. It, it all does depend on Tartaglia, though. if Because I know Kutu... Volpe, they're going to show up, though. But it's going to be that third piece. And if it, Tartaglia does show up, they do win. If Tartaglia, for some reason, struggles this game, we potentially – I, I'm, I, we might see that upset if it does happen, though. They do need that third piece. Mm. Those are yeah. very capable of that. And it definitely – now that you mentioned it, it definitely could be this one. You know, they're going to have low guys again with no Shane Patrick. It could be. We'll see. Yeah, we will see. And uh, another game that we're about to see about, uh, we don't have to spend too much time on it, but it's the Halfway Crooks versus the Mambas. Uh, Halfway Crooks, like we said, put up a good fight this week. Mambas, uh, they fell to 0-5 here. Uh, Halfway Crooks have to be favored. 
you know, I tried my best with the Mambas, but it's just not working out, unfortunately. Um, I feel like Crook's going to be favored by 10, 12 points here. Uh, what are you guys thinking? Because I just think Joey's squad, they, they've been struggling since week one, but they show some life. I think this is going to be a, a good bounce back week for them. Uh, for me, I'm going to choose the Mambas. I'm gonna choose oh the Mambas. Oh I want to see. I want to see them win. I feel bad for them. Like they, literally, if they had a full squad last, uh, last week, they win. So uh, this is also another good chance to get a win. All the halfway coaches need to have a bad shooting game from three, and Mambas what, what win. Kind of, what kind of statement is that? If they have all their guys, it, yeah. it, if my if my apple was an orange, it'd be an orange. You know if what I'm saying? Had something it, else should be my uncle. So. You know, yeah, I, I, I was gonna say that one, but I kept the P, I kept the PG for the pod. No, that that, that is a that is a nothing statement. The uh, this is halfway crooks. I mean, look, the Mambas they had Stampede, they had Ball Don't Lie, and they can't get a win. I'm and just half, trying to, I just want to give them some. I want to give them some confidence. I feel bad. Like you don't want to see a team go zero and seven, especially because they're putting in hard work out there. They Come need on. confidence from the podcast guys to win a game. Yeah, I'm trying to help them out. <laughs> I'm sure they're all listening too. Sure uh, they're listening very. Intently. I got I got halfway crooks. I mean, I, I don't think it's a hard choice. They they gave Lob City a pretty good battle. They had they look like they have some guys that are capable of you know scoring whenever like not whenever they want, but they can create their own offense. I'll say, yeah, I'm gonna go halfway crooks here. But yeah, I mean. I'm- would would it be mad if the Mambas win though? Wouldn't be mad at it. No, I'd love to I see know the Joey Mambas would be play. mad. Joey would be mad, but <laughs> listen, I, I, I heard Joey's last week we we're talking about Joey possibly putting up a forty point performance. Joey, come on, man. Listen, we, we gotta see a little bit better than what we saw last Joey week. Joey looked like he was doing more coaching. It looked like Steve Kerr on the sidelines. Yeah, I don't know that zero point that ankle. I'm not too impressed. <laughs> yeah, we I just need to give him a clipboard next time. He was on vacation. I'm sure he was enjoying it, whatever, in Disney with Mickey. But come on, Joey. we got to see a little bit better if we're going to be a, a little too many churros down in Orlando. Yeah, dude, a little too many. It, uh, it, you know. So if halfway crooks win, are we calling this a Mickey Mouse win? <laughs> yeah, I think it would be a Mickey Mouse win. Be, both their wins would be against teams with no wins at the time of the game. So I mean, Joey uh, looked a little slow, too. He had those ankle weights on. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's what Disney does to you. That's what Disney does, unfortunately. Uh, and I'm sure his pockets weren't feeling too good after that trip either. But uh, no offense, Joey. Just get the win this week, huh? You guys should get this win. Um, but all right, enough about that game. Uh, on to the Warriors versus the team that sinned very badly this week by not showing up, Sin City. Um, good one. Yeah, that was a good joke. Um, the Warriors, they really need to, you know, make a statement here, I think. How how can we pick Sin City when they don't show up to the to the game? I don't know. It's hard for me to even like know like who's gonna show up. They've had four guys, five guys, four guys, you know. So this is a tough game to really put too much stock into Sin City, in my opinion. So that's why I feel pretty heavy about the Warriors, you know, ten point favorites here. Yeah, hard, hard agree. I was thinking ten as well. That's the number that came to my head. And yeah, you can't bet on the team that didn't even show up last week. So I mean, the Warriors, maybe they're starting to figure it out, getting some wins. But, um, yeah, I think it's an easy choice. Uh, Yeah, Warriors, mm, I'll even go 15 points. So, you want to do it 13, 12? Yeah, that's fine with me. All right. And and I'll still take the Warriors because I don't see anybody on Sin City that has the ability to stop Kevin Figueroa. I think he could possibly go for 40 and 15 this week. I think it's a strong possibility if he wants to because – Stin City just doesn't have the size, um, and I don't think that they'll be able to keep up with the Warriors um, if they show up, which I hope they do because it's kind of lame when there's just teams that are paying, you know, to play these games, and you get minimal games already this year, and you actually don't get to play. It kind of sucks. So hopefully they show up this week, and, and the Warriors, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I, I don't really. I'd like to see just a good game out of these two, but can't pick pick on Stin City after last week. That's all I know. So, yeah, I think I think it's enough on that game. There's not much to say about Sin City at this moment in time. Um, but Orcas, after, you know, two tough games and then just being handed a W, they have a really tough game. 
Um, they're facing good you who's coming off a loss. Um, we know what good you can do. Um, and now with the little extra motivation after, you know, a tough fought, fought loss this week, uh, I think good you is going to be, you know, heavy 15 point favorites here. Um, you know, just because of their skill level. I even go 20. Yeah. This is I mean, very, very fair. Yeah. Good. You, I mean, they, they were close to being the Duye boys. So, I mean, yeah, good, good. You, I mean, they got too much good play, too many good players, best player in the league, in my opinion. Um, and they can, they got other guys on the team and they had three other guys that had at least 11 against uh, DA's boys. So they can put four out there that'll absolutely put buckets on your head. So, um, and the Orcas, they haven't looked too hot recently. And I don't think, you know, coming in that Sin City game, they probably really wanted to bounce back and play well and getting a forfeit win doesn't do anybody favors. So uh, I'm, I'm going to give this to good you. Uh, yeah, I'll choose good you by uh, 10 points. Because yeah, here's the thing, though. It, it throws it throws the Orcas off of their rhythm because, yeah, they were they were ready to come in. They, they were full, they had a fully full team showed up. Now we, we're not really sure if uh, the shooting's all going to be there, if their full team's going to be there, because there's sometimes where they don't have their full team show up to have like two players. Um, I, good you, I, they're just going to go back to their normal stuff. Uh, they just faced a tough opponent last week, so I think they're just going to go out, do their do the same old thing that they usually do, and uh, yeah, I'll say 10 points. I'll say the only thing that helps the Orcas is that good extra you. rest. Yeah, they, they do get the extra rest. That's helpful. And um, good you tends to play games that are lower scoring. Um, and Orcas, obviously, their offense has been in shambles recently. So I think that gives the Orcas a good chance to keep it close and maybe cover the spread. Um, but they're just not winning this game. Uh, good use, uh, just just too solid all around. And like Matt was saying, uh, giving big props to, to Matt St. Hours that he definitely deserves. Um, one of the best players in the league, but never talked about because it's – you know, he doesn't put up like some gaudy stat line most weeks and he doesn't uh, talk a lot or anything too crazy. But, yeah, he's definitely one of the best players in the league. And, you know, when you add him in with, you know, Brendan Degnan and some of their other guys on the team, they're extremely dangerous. And I just don't think Orcas will have an answer for them this week. And on to the last game of the week, uh, Ball Don't Lie versus Stampede. Ball Don't Lie here. Now look – like they have a good chance to win back-to-back games after starting the season really tough. Um, you know, we talked about Stampede. They fell apart in the second half last week. Um, I'm not really sure about this game. Uh, Ball Don't Lie definitely showed a little promise. Um, they beat the Mambas by more than Stampede did, if that means anything to you guys. Um, so where do you stand here? Because at this moment in time, I'm thinking like Ball Don't Lie by a point or two, but it's kind of hard to split them. I would definitely say this game is a toss-up. Because ball and lie, uh, Grant, Grant, we know obviously he's going to show up. He's going to do his normal thing. But the Hebrew Hammer, too. Hebrew Hammer. Yeah. It, it just depends on the rest of the supporting cast, though. And uh, Stampede, uh, they they play they can play good defense when it matters, when they take advantage of uh, the team having a, sl- uh, a slumping night. So that's the reason why I think this is going to be a toss-up. Uh, I'll take ball, don't lie – It'll be two, but this truly is a toss-up. I wouldn't be shocked if this game could potentially goes into overtime. I'm thinking ball don't lie. I'm taking them. I'm taking them by ten. I'm not wow. impressed with the stampede really at all. Um, if you hear this at me, uh, I love how I, blunt you are. Huh? Love how blunt you are about that. No, nah, yeah, that, because I think ball don't lie. Pretty good win against the Mambas and. I like Rosenberg. I like some guys on that team. So uh, I don't think the Stampede are, are too impressive. Um, that not, not no other way to say. I don't want to sugarcoat it. So yeah, yeah. Ball don't lie. They they were aggressive to the hoop this week. That's usually a, a winning um, a winning strategy in legacy leagues. Stampede living and dying by the three. Usually you're going to end up dying by the three. Like I said earlier, um, I got ball don't lie in this game. I don't feel like it's going to be a 10-point game, but I could be wrong. I think Ball Don't Lie end up uh, squeaking this one out and going to two and four um, and actually kind of, you know, moving up our power rankings a little bit. Um, so any more statements in this game? Any games you guys want to talk about anything else? I think we covered everything. 
Yeah. yeah. You guys, boys, they demoralize you enough. You're good. <laughs> uh, come on, Ozone boys. Uh, I know I picked two gay boys, but come on, Ozone boys. Come on, y'all got to step up. Please. I'm for the Ozone boys just because I like them. I want them to bounce back. And obviously, you, you don't want to see – you want to see an undefeated team get upset. It's always fun to cheer for the underdog. Um, but, you know, do these boys, they once were the underdog, and I'm sticking with them until they lose. Um, Going to be a great week. I'm looking forward to it. You know, week – Week six already. It's kind of crazy how time's flying. Only two more weeks of the regular season. Um, and then we go into the playoffs, which I'm super excited for. Uh, thank you, boys, for joining me again, as always. Uh, see you, boys, week six. See ya. See ya.